We're now in a new section in this particular Revit Structure course, and we're looking now at annotating our construction documents. So you'll notice up at the top of the screen now, we now have a new Revit project file, which is Revit Structure Annotating Docs, RVT there. So that will be in your Working Files folder on your DVD, or you will have downloaded it in your Working Files from the download from the website. So what we need to look at now is actually annotating and placing annotation onto our Revit Structure project. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing is you don't do it on your sheets. You do it in each individual view within the project itself. So in the project browser, I've gone to Structural Plan 000 Ground Floor, and I'm going to show you how to place some dimensions first of all. Let's look at placing the dimensions, and then in the next video, we'll look at editing dimensions. So one of the first things you would normally do looking at a structural plan or a floor plan, you'd normally place some dimensions between your grid lines to show your grid centers. So let's look at the Aligned tool here. Now this is in the Annotate tab on the ribbon in the Dimension panel here. So I click on Aligned like so and come into the drawing area. Now don't forget I can select the type of dimension I want to use. I've got loads there. It's a bit like AutoCAD where you can change all your arrowheads and things in your dimension styles. So I'm using the 2.5 millimeter aerial with filled arrowheads there. So you can change the text, you can change the size, you can change the arrowhead. Now I'm just using the default one at the moment, purely for simplicity. Now check your options bar when you're working with dimensions. Notice you've got the option of wall center line or other options as well. I'm gonna go for wall center line in this case. And what I can do is I can pick individual references or I can pick entire walls. When I select entire walls, I've also got options. We'll look at those later. I want individual references and wall center lines. Notice as well now the ribbon has changed and we are in modify place dimensions. So all your dimensions are now over on the right. So I'm in the drawing area. I've got the little dimension symbol there next to my arrowhead. So I hover over the references. So I click there on the grid line, drag, there's the next one. And I just keep going now. And you'll notice they automatically align, which is excellent. Saves a lot of time later. And what I'll do is I'll place those up near the bubbles on the grid lines. And I click, like so, hit escape, they disappear. Now remember, you can't just go and click them all and then hit escape. They disappear like all the other Revit commands. So I'll need to go back again and go and click on them again. It's very quick, very, very easy, like so. So I click there, then I click away. As soon as I click away, they update. Now the lovely thing about the dimensions in Revit is you can lock them. So once that dimension is placed, you can actually add a constraint to that. So if those two grids move, that dimension will be constrained. So any changes, it's constrained and it's fixed. I'm not going to lock them in this case, but I could if I wanted to. I'll just hit escape there to deselect those like so. So if I zoom in close now, you can see there's my filled arrowheads. There's my aerial font and so on. Now, what happens if I want to dimension an entire wall? I've got an entire wall down here. Can you see that there? So if I zoom in, I've got that wall section there. I've got walls everywhere with openings and so on and so forth. That's why I went for the ground floor. I'm just going to pan across here like so. Now, I've got my wall here, you'll notice, with some reinforcement in it. There's a wall there. So I've got structural reinforcement and I've got a wall. I've got another wall there as well. So I've got to be careful what I select. However, to avoid that mishmash, I can use the hide option if I want to, if I want to dimension a wall rather than between grid lines. However, staying with the aligned dimension here, I can pick the wall center line if I want to, which I will, and then I'll pick instead entire walls. I can then go and set my options, which are, I can switch on openings, centers of openings or widths of openings, I'll go for widths, any intersecting walls and any intersecting grids. So if I click on OK now, I can dimension an entire wall. It picks the wall. If I click now, there's the dimension of my wall. So I'll just drag that up to there so that we can see it. Click away and there we are. Now if I hit escape there now, you'll notice I've got a zero dimension here. So there's obviously a slight offset somewhere there in that particular wall. I'm not going to worry about it right now but you can see there that I've got a zero coming off. I can edit that later on if I need to. So that's how you place the two different types of dimensions. You can use either individual references, like I did for the center lines on the grids, 
or I can select entire walls like so and go off and just click on a wall and it will dimension that wall. The best bit about it though as well is if there's any openings in that wall, it will also dimension them as well. So that's how you place your dimensions within Revit Structure.